Madhu, how yeah. similar was your early New York apartment to the Visser? <laughs> I wish I lived with the Visser. Are you kidding? <laughs> Some of the apartments I lived in New York, you wouldn't believe it. I was like the de facto exterminator. It was revolting. The best would have been dope. <laughs> I know. I, I felt that way when I walked. I remember walked into Melody's apartment, and I was like, "Damn, this is in the East Village. Like, th this is nice." Like, He's balling out. Yeah. I had an apartment in the Lower East Side. One day, I got woken up by the whole apartment shaking, and oh, dust was falling into huh. my bedroom. <laughs> yeah. And me and my boyfriend at the time sort of like woke up and we were like, what is happening? And this like a thick layer of like black dirt was on everything. And I guess they oh, were doing- Kalego. It was Kalego. <laughs> you know, what memory stands out the most in our friendship together? I will never forget the day we met. I remember, cause we met at a house party. I don't know whose party yes. it was. Party. I don't even, who you know, knows? Who, who knows? Also, I think auditioning for schools at the same time was really memorable. Yeah. Doing the show together is like the third in these kind of moments in time. 18 years old, a couple of years later, grad school, yeah. and then in this show. It's a cool, yeah. there's a pattern to it in some it way. It is cool, super cool. I went to NYU, so it was funny to play a character that was at NYU for grad school. That was fun and felt special, felt like an honoring of my time there in some way. How did you react when you found out what was gonna happen to Dan in the first season? Well, the thing is that, that I am happy for him. He gets to actualize his dream. You know, like he's an archivist and he's a restorer of what's lost. And, and somewhere in the middle of the script, he, he begins to actually do that. Like he's living out his life's like, you know, super objective, which is something that nobody gets to do. You know, sorry, I'm using corny actor terms, whatever. I know, I was gonna say that. <laughs> I know, I saw your face, I saw your face. <laughs> Did I react? Yeah, I was like, I was super like, objective. <laughs> oh, yeah. But yeah, but like, what a gift for somebody, I mean, for somebody who's experienced such pain in his yeah. life. What a, what a gift. But to go back in time and, and to like be potentially trapped there, that's a, that's a frightening thing for anyone. I, I have a lot of hope for him. And I, I hope he catches a break real soon. <laughs> Damn, yeah, he does not get, like, I, it does not get better for him. I, just... I needed it too. I was like, can, can we give him a good time so I, so I can have a, I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. Similarly, because when you find out what her purpose is, what she's there for, uh -huh. and her longing, and this mm -hmm. feeling of not knowing who she is, and desperately needing that's why she stays in a place like the viscer because even mm -hmm. though it's terrifying this is the closest thing she has to lead on finding her mother yeah. and when she discovers that it's all been a lie and samuel has basically lured her, lured her there for his own objective i was devastated she's just been after this thing and believing in it and for the rug to get pulled out from under her so strongly felt yeah just so disappointing and sad that by the end of the show, when she actually does end up with her mother, I find that really powerful because it's so unexpected. You don't think that's what's gonna happen. No. And you don't think that. And that's what's so beautiful about the Bobby character and that reveal exactly. and that all along you and my mom have been searching for me. I found that really moved me. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. It's... What was the most challenging part of the story for you? the real and intense loneliness I, I experienced throughout shooting but it, it also worked very well <laughs> for the character you know, shooting uh, uh, last year obviously we're still in the middle of this pandemic and um you know just didn't hang out with anyone didn't just went to set and went home and a lot of my time on set was alone yeah you know started to really get to me that loneliness is palpable and I think <laughs> Will, and I think will really resonate with people because I think we're all really lonely. That's what I thought was special about our show coming out at a time like this. We're still at home, you know, the olden days. We'd be in a room together, doing this together, sitting side by side, right. and yeah. like getting to touch each other. And so the fact that our connection happens via screen and that you're alone, 
uh, is quite emotional, especially emotional during a pandemic. And I think that'll really resonate mm -hmm. with people. How do you think our characters will find their way back to the correct timeline? And do you think they even want to? Interesting because, so now you're technically in the timeline where your father's still alive, right? Technically, Technical. maybe, possibly. Maybe. And I'm with my mother, so I don't know. I think there is a desire to go to the correct timeline, mm. you know, to where you belong, because ultimately that's where your life is. Um, I don't want to speak for Dan, but I know for yeah. Melody, <laughs> he left Annabelle behind. And sure, Annabelle's still alive, but much older. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if she can go back and right her wrong, I think she feels like she's failed Annabelle. Yeah. And so to go back and try and find, I, I mean, I, I guess if she goes back, she might lose the opportunity of finding her mother in that time yeah. period because her mother hasn't had to come to where she is now. Yeah, it's the butterfly effect. You can, you have to go back or else it screws yeah. everything up, right? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, that's, that's, I think it's even more complicated for your character. For my character, it's not as complicated. I mean, he lives <laughs> in the past. I mean, yeah. from his, some of his clothes, um, just like, you know, he, he restores old artifacts. He's obsessed yeah. with time. And he doesn't have much of a life in the present for him, you know? Like everything is focused on like, you know, restoring, getting back, giving back to other people. And like, if he can get that for himself, I mean, I'm good, <laughs> you know? You now, your best friend? He'll be right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Ooh, under but, the bus. but I know, but you know, he's also a reasonable person. You know, and he knows that this is something that's a, a, a tenable situation. I think he also understands like how 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 this is just kind of a um, an aberration and, and something kind of unholy, <laughs> for lack of a better word. So it's like this probably isn't good. So, there, but I think the temptation is strong. So now that you're in the past, what do you think um, is the most drastic thing you'll do? I mean, for me, I don't think seeking out my family would be drastic. I think that would be the rational thing to do. Now, having a little date with Davenport, young man Davenport, that might be... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that might be a little something, something, but, uh, yeah. you know, or, or, or Samuel, you know, just some of the, uh, the usual suspects. Um, I think those are the potentially, well, definitely dangerous and drastic things that I would, I would do. What about you in the future? Oh my God, um, buy an iPhone? I mean, who knows? <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Instagram? Um, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I mean, I just think it's all about her mother, right? I think she'd go see Annabelle. Mm -hmm. Old oh. Annabelle, I think that'd probably be a shock. Um, Old Annabelle. I know. How good is Julia, right? She's, she's amazing, she's, she's, she's the greatest. I think there's some deep, you know, stuff she has to hash out with her mom who she feels like abandoned her. Sure. Some understanding and also to go after, I think they are now having to go after Samuel and close this portal that they've opened. So mm -hmm. there's some stuff they gotta deal with. Mamadou, what's the biggest question you have um, about what's gonna happen? Biggest question is, are we going to do it again? <laughs> um, honestly, but, but in terms of the story, um, well, I'm just curious how how we move forward. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. Like, what do you do when you find yourself stuck in the past or in the future? What do you do? How do you go back? And if you can't, how do you survive? How do you adapt? What about you? Yeah, I guess I'm wildly curious to see where the writers will take the show, you know? Because it's such a crazy thing to wrap your head around now that they're in opposite places. I think they're going to want to try and find each other too. I think they have a stake in each other's well-being. So I don't think Melody could handle leaving Dan in the past, especially <laughs> in danger and yeah. vice versa. Oh. It's just every season they're just going to switch places. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Dina, what's going on in the future? What's going on with Painkiller? Give me the scoop. I'm really excited about it. It's a mini series I just wrapped for Netflix as well that Pete Berg directed, who's an absolute genius. And 
I got to play a very different character than Melody. Melody's really kind and generous and cares about people, and Britt, the character I played on Painkiller, doesn't give a f about anyone but herself, really. And she's all about making money, power, and um, is a survivor. And that was just really interesting to play. And it it's all about the Sackler family and how Oxycontin came to be. And so dealing with such a real thing felt like there was like a heavy weight on it and like a responsibility. And I don't play anyone on the right side of that story. I'm playing a pharmaceutical rep who's actually, you know, on the wrong side of history ultimately. And so to get into that and to humanize oh. her and see that whole world was really interesting. I'm really excited for it. What Pete did with it is it's going to be wild and um, very unexpected. So oh. I'm Mamadou, what's scarier, Calego or the dinosaurs in Jurassic Dominion? The dinosaur. Um, what was that like? The, did you have to pretend with green screen or how did you do that? They, have, they had some real massive puppets on occasion. No. no, no. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. I was like, that's a dinosaur. <laughs> they had dinosaur <laughs> puppets? Yes, it was incredible. Um, Calego, Calego's the scariest. <laughs> Clay goes <laughs> demon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I know what a dinosaur is gonna do. I, I don't know what a other dimensional entity is going to do to my soul. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> it's gotta be Galego. <laughs>